Hi there, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today I want to talk about the placement of type annotations in some of the most popular programming languages, because I'm one of those people who cares about syntax, and so I find this kind of thing interesting. So the questions for today are, what does the fox say, and where do the types go? But actually, only the second of those. To define popularity, I'm going to be looking at the amount of GitHub activity, as for example, it said on my Languish Trends tool. So I'm looking most at the top 20 languages here, only I've left out those languages for which there's not an interesting type annotation story. And that includes Objective-C as not terribly interesting because the static typing in Objective-C isn't really different from the static typing in C. The new features that are added to Objective-C relate to dynamic message passing. So let's start out with Python. Python originally did not have type annotations. They added this sort of generic annotation syntax in Python 3, and in later versions, started standardizing it to mean static typing. And in particular, we see that typing annotations follow the things that they annotate in Python, whether that's colon followed by type for values, or for return types of functions, we use a thin arrow followed by the type. In Python and many languages, super types of a type we're defining now end up after the new type's name. And also commonly for those that have parameterized types, the type arguments follow the core type as well. Although interestingly, with this noop cast function in Python, the type being cast to comes before the value being cast. My example in each of these languages is going to be the same idea of an order made out of order lines with a unit price and quantity, and a function that can calculate the total price of an order. I'll also usually pull out one of my lines in advance in order to demonstrate casting operations. And note that when you're doing money operations, it's best to use some kind of high precision or arbitrary precision decimal type so that you don't end up rounding people's money away. And in some of the languages, I'll demonstrate this. In other languages, because it's inconvenient or inaccessible in the core standard library, I won't demonstrate this. Anyway, just giving the context for my example that I'll be showing the various languages. Moving on to Java, we see that we have our type annotations before the thing that they annotate. That includes function return types. And our casting in Java also precedes the thing that we're casting. Go like Python has trailing type annotations, although Go has the distinction of being the only language on this list without extra syntax for trailing types. For example, in Python we had colons and skinny arrows, and in Go we have no such thing which in some ways makes it feel a little bit more like C that also has no extra syntax between the type and the thing being typed. I also find it interesting that when we're creating a structured literal and we need to have an explicit type on it, the type goes before the structured literal as opposed to afterward. It makes some sense why that might be the case, but it's just interesting to consider. Also worth pointing out that Go is very insistent on all modifiers follow the thing that they modify otherwise. And typecasts in Go also are trailing to the thing that they're casting. Now C++ is really the motivator for this video today because of my somewhat controversial insistence on using trailing return types whenever I'm writing C++. Mostly C++ inherits the notions of C that the type annotation goes before the thing being annotated. And for many people, even still today, they usually will put the return type prior to the function as well. But starting in C++11, they allowed for trailing return types. And the reason why they did this was so that you can give expressions about the return type that reference parameters of the function. In this particular example, I did not use any kind of high precision or arbitrary precision decimal type. I just let doubles pretend to do that job. However, this function I created here for total price is not only independent of the type of container, it's also independent of the type being used for the unit price. And as long as these operators are defined, it should still work fine. So this function should work fine with an arbitrary precision decimal type, even though my particular structure in this case isn't. Note that I did not need to refer to my parameter in this example. I could just as well have referenced lines value type if lines happens to define a value type, which is going to be the case commonly for things such as vector and so on from the standard library. This may or may not be more straightforward to different people. However, I find it interesting to look at other examples as well. So if we go to the standard begin definition in Microsoft's libraries, we see that many of their templated begin and end functions are defined in terms of the dot end or dot begin of the parameter in question. In C++, casting will also precede the thing being cast. And in many ways, even for different types of casts in C++ or constructor calls, we find it's not always easy to distinguish between a function call and a cast in C++. And we'll see this kind of feel appear in other languages as well. 
So I do include TypeScript separately from JavaScript in this case because JavaScript has no standard type annotations, although we see TypeScript is becoming a very popular alternative for doing so in JavaScript. In TypeScript, again, we find trailing type annotations primarily with the use of a colon. And there's two syntaxes for casting available, which are equivalent, either preceding or trailing. And the trailing syntax was added because this syntax that they originally had for casting is somewhat ambiguous with JSX or embedded XML, which is popularized for the React framework. PHP added type annotations in PHP 5, and it interestingly has leading types for values and trailing return types. And this is just a standard syntax, unlike C++ where the trailing is an option. And in C Sharp, like Java, we're back to leading types, including for return types of functions. However, we do have both leading and trailing typecasts, where the semantics are different between the two. And while there's no need for this function here to be generic, I made a commented out version here just to show that in cases where it would be useful, you can do generic type annotations, which end up pushing some of your types over to the end of your function definition instead of earlier on. And now we come to see, which defined a lot of the expectation from many of these other languages, that type annotations should come before the things they annotate. Now I included HTML, which might strike some people as odd, and perhaps it's arguable whether type annotations in HTML are more about just defining data than they are about annotating a type of something. But I find HTML interesting because the attribute syntax in elements allows arbitrary order sometimes on whether a name or a type comes first. Names in HTML are usually given by either the ID, which is global to the document, or a form field name, which is relative to the form it's contained in. And type specifiers in HTML are either going to be the tag name itself or a class definition where multiple classes are an option or the type attribute on form input elements. Perhaps there are other examples I haven't thought of as well. And like I was mentioning, in the case of either class attributes or type attributes, it's arbitrary whether the name or the type comes first. Getting back to actual programming languages, the next on our list is Swift, which like Python has trailing return types with colon for values and skinny arrows for return. Casting also uses trailing syntax. In Scala, we also see trailing types. And just like in C++ and other languages, we tend to think of our type constructors as being function calls. And furthermore, the casting is back to being a function call as well. In this case, a trailing method call. This leads to the question of whether leading function calls and trailing function calls for construction or casting might be equally served by pipeline operators and or universal function call syntax such that leading or trailing becomes somewhat arbitrary. I'm not sure if this has been heavily explored in popular programming languages. In Dart, we see leading types for both values and return types, but trailing for casting. In a Rust, we're back to trailing types again with colon for values and skinny arrows for return types. And finally, Kotlin being similar to Scala, we see trailing types again. And this concludes our survey, but I still want to take a look at this in sort of a data format. Here mostly are the languages we looked at. I left out HTML because it didn't really fit one of the categories, and I put back in Objective-C for using C-style typing annotation syntax. My y-axis is the GitHub activity share as it's found on Languish. And the x-axis is the year in which a language was introduced or in which the year that the version with typing annotations was introduced. For example, PHP 5 or Python 3. It's worth noting these languages are current most popular languages, not the most popular languages, say, back in 1980. There's plenty of other languages from before and after C that use trailing type annotations. But the dominance of C in recent decades led many of the other currently popular programming languages to use leading type annotations. However, we see a trend in recent years back away from the leading type annotations. This might be related to the recent popularity of type inference as well. Also, note that I've included C++ twice to allow for the trailing return type option of C++11. And both C++11 and PHP 5 I've marked with both colors because they have leading and or trailing types depending on the situation. Anyway, I hope this has been fun, and maybe we can talk more about the effects of syntax decisions in the future. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye, y'all.